this is just a short video response to a news article that came out yesterday which I just want to respond to quickly. The news article was headed Action RPG Shooter, that's a game, The Binding of Isaac won't release on the th Nintendo 3DS due to what Nintendo has reportedly deemed to be questionable religious content. Now the truth is Nintendo in the past has released games where you basically have to battle against the occupants of heaven and finally get to God or something like that. I, can't, I don't even know what the name of that game is called. But, so I don't necessarily think Nintendo's not put this game on their system because of religious content. Probably more than likely because of some of the images that this game contains. The game is called The Binding of Isaac. And the description of this game is this indie title sees you take on the role of Isaac from the Bible, a naked little boy cast into the network of sellers under his house after God has commanded his mother to kill him. Unlike in the Bible, no stay of execution awaits you, only level after level of top-down, randomly generated dungeon po populated by Isaac's monstrous former siblings. Originally released on Steam in September of 2011, the well-received indie game has sold over 450, 000, half a million copies, for goodness sake, this game has sold on Steam. Now, let, I just want to take a look at this. I mean, the, the guy that this guy, what's his name, Edmund? Edmund McMillan, who has made this game clearly has an issue with this, the fact that God told Isaac to, uh, sorry, uh, Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And I just want to take a look at that. So reading in Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Now I just want to stop there where it says God tempted Abraham. We, uh, we know in James that it says God tempteth no man nor indeed can be tempted by man and he tempteth no man. Um, now I'm going to come back to that later. What, why then in the New Testament if it says God doesn't tempt anyone does it say here in the Old Testament that he tempted Abraham? Well like I said we need to explore this thoroughly and at the end, it will be self-evident what was going on here. Verse 2. And he said, this is God talking to Abraham, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, uh, Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So offer him as a burnt offering. And we know basically what that means is, because uh, we read later on, um, before that the burnt offering sacrifice is offered to God by being burnt. It is killed first, whether it's, you know, an animal or whatever, is killed with a knife first. So what what's going on here? Well, the only way you can understand this, and now, first of all, I just want to say, I'm not angry with this Edmund guy. I'm not angry with him at all. He's not a Christian. Clearly he's not a Christian. He's not a believer. Because even as a Christian, you have to ask. And I have not, I didn't just as a Christian read this scripture and go, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. No, the scriptures are only understood by other scriptures and they are only revealed to us by the Holy Spirit of the living God. Only a true believer can, if he is humbly seeking God and asking God to show him his truth, will God reveal that truth by his Holy Spirit? It's not a work of man. And there's no way, no way an unbeliever can see that. And so, to a degree, I can understand this guy thinking, well, that's just child abuse, that's just God telling uh, parents to kill their own children. But he's clearly taken it to the next step. He knows if he, if he wanted to search for the answer, he could find it. But instead, he's decided to make this blasphemous game. It is a blasphemous game because we will look into this. What's going on here? God's saying to sacrifice Isaac. Well, you can only understand scripture by scripture. You can only interpret scripture by scripture. So we'll turn to the next book of the Bible, Exodus, chapter 13. 
think so that's chapter 13 and verse 2 it says sanctify unto me this is God talking sanctify unto me all the firstborn whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel both men and of beast it is mine and going on verse 12 and 13 of the same chapter that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that cometh of of the beast which thou hast the males shall be the Lord's and every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb now listen to this you shalt redeem it with a lamb and if thou will not redeem it then thou shalt break his neck and all the firstborn of man among thy children thou shalt redeem. In other words, God saying thou shalt surely redeem. He doesn't even give the option here that, well, if you don't redeem the children, the men, you'll have to kill them. No, of course they need to be redeemed. In other words, they can be redeemed. Rather than giving, um, basically what God is saying is, these firstborn of the human sons of um, the Israelite people, they belonged to God. They are gods. They're already gods. Now the animals, they're just animals, so God when he said give me the first firstborn, um, you know, you sacrifice and kill it. But you can still redeem the animals. So how much more did God put in place? When it comes to the, the sons, the firstborn sons, there was no question that God wanted the people to go through and kill and sacrifice the sons. No, the whole idea, the whole point was you do redeem your son because he's your son. Um, but it is to show it is the Lord's. Um, numbers, uh, oh, chapter 22, the same book, Exodus, and verse 29, says, Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits, and of thy liquor, liquor, liqueurs. The firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Yep, let's let's read Numbers, two two books more forward. Book of Numbers, chapter three, verse thirteen. Because all the firstborn are mine. Again, God talking. From the day now here's the reason. From the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast, mine shall they be. I am the Lord. Now, he, God delivered uh, the Israelites from Egypt. The final plague was that God killed all the firstborn of Egyptians, of the Egyptian people. But remember, God didn't just, literally didn't just pick on the Egyptians, because the scripture says all men have, uh, have fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one, including the Israelites. They weren't perfect. They weren't holy and righteous. And that is why God said to them, look, you have to sacrifice a lamb on that night that, that God's going to send his angel through the Egyptians and kill them. You have to sacrifice a lamb. You have to put the blood on your doorpost or else your firstborn sons will also die. God gave no distinction except by the covering of the blood of the lamb. So the firstborn of the um, Israelites were saved. They were redeemed and God purchased them on that day. But this whole thing, the whole thing is pointing to Christ. It's Christ, Christ, Christ. The whole picture is Christ. Now, go back to um, the, the, the old, uh, Genesis, back to the account, when God is told Abraham to offer up Isaac. Now, yeah, this was before the um, Israelites, uh, God bought the firstborn of the Israelites. But considering the fact that that whole picture of Abraham and Isaac was the picture of Christ, and the, the uh, delivering of the firstborn of the Israelites in Egypt was a picture of Christ. Joseph, uh, the story of Joseph is a picture of Christ. Every, the whole entire Bible is Christ-centred. Now, so what, what, what you've got happening is, in, in like, like I was saying, in uh, Abraham and Isaac, when Abraham is stood there with the knife, ready to kill his son, it says a voice spoke from heaven and stayed his hand. So God was not tempting, this is the point I was making, God was not tempting Abraham to sin, because the scripture says God doesn't tempt any man to sin. It says, it says that God allows the devil to tempt men, and God will use that as a test, but he, doesn't, he himself does not tempt anyone to sin, because God hates sin. No, 
But when God did this, tempted, in other words, when God tempted Abraham, in other words, you could say he was testing Abraham. And it wasn't sin. This is the whole point. It wasn't sin. God owned the firstborn. Not only did God own the firstborn, but especially as we as Christians, we don't, for example, we don't just think God owns 10% of our income. God owns the whole thing. We don't just think God owns the firstborn of our children, my son Josh, owns both my kids, all my kids, my whole life, my, my everything, in all and everything is Christ in the New Testament. And this is the picture. So God stayed Abraham's hand and said, no, don't lay your hand upon him. Now, here's the thing. As they were walking up to that mountain, Isaac said to his father, um, where, no, let's go back a bit before that. The, before he let, uh, right, he got to the mountain, before he left the company of men, he, he walked up the mountain alone with Isaac, but he left his company of men that had travelled with him to the base of the mountain, and he said to the, the men, me and the boy will go yonder and worship, so sacrificing his son was an act of worship, and we will return to you. He had the faith, because he knew that God had promised in Isaac, and only Isaac, um, that he would be the father of a multitude of people. So he knew God wasn't a liar. He knew he was trusting and expecting God after the sacrifice to raise Isaac from the dead. Even in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul tells us that Abraham did, in a figurative sense, receive up Isaac from the dead. Now, what Abraham experienced figuratively, if you like, the death and resurrection of his son, it wasn't physical, it's just figuratively, this is the whole point. God did not stay his own hand. He stayed his hand, Abraham's hand over Isaac. God did not stay his hand over his own son, Jesus Christ in Nazareth. 2,000 years ago, he allowed him to be whipped and beat and stabbed and sliced and cut and put on that cross and literally die. He allowed it. And Jesus willingly allowed himself to go through with that plan for the redemption of our sin Mr Macmillan Edmund Macmillan because I just want to address you directly Mr Macmillan because on one of the websites one of one of the blogs uh, somebody asks you the question will I burn in hell for having played your game and you replied to them if hell existed you still wouldn't burn in it for playing Isaac. Just make sure you accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour before you die and everything will be fine. FYI, this also works for murder. It is but a hell of a loophole. Well, what can I say but re-quote the New Testament. What do I care but in all things and in all places the gospel is preached. You do it mockingly but you proclaim the truth. If you accept Jesus, Lord and Saviour, you will be fine. And you're right, it does work for murder. And obviously you're trying to be sarcastic by talking about the loophole. But there's just one small point I need to bring up in your sentence. You are implying when you say, just make sure you accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour before you die. Before you die? This is the whole point. You cannot... <laughs> God is not some system or words or mathematics or a computer program, my friend, where you can live your life how you want. And then you think it, at the end, just, oh, quickly, now, let's believe in him. Let's follow him. Let's be a Christian. Let's uh, do the right thing and we'll get into heaven. No, God is a person, my friend, and he and judgment day is coming and judgment is at the door. We shall all stand before him, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, both believer, Christian believer and non-believer. It's not just non-believers that get judged on Judgment Day. Remember this, Christian brethren. Every, everything um, we, we have to give an account for. Thank goodness for Christ on that day, we will not have to um, have our sins brought up and remembered before us. However, works done in the name of the Lord and not done will be judged. You know what, I need to do a whole other teaching on that, so forget that. That's a whole other teaching. But I just want to say, you cannot live your life that in the last minute you're going to repent. God is not. It says in scripture uh, somewhere that God, um, God is not mocked. You, you, you cannot fool God. You cannot play with God. In fact, 
the clear implication from uh, scripture is that the longer you hardened your heart against him and not follow him and not believe him, the harder your heart gets and then the harder it is to actually turn and be saved. So plenty of old people out there rejected God all their life. It's far easier for a young person to turn to God because they've not rejected and resisted him their entire life. They've not had their conscience seared with a hot iron, the scripture says. Also, um, somebody made the fan art, uh, some fan art of this guy's games, and it was on the Edmunds Dev Blog for Gay Nerds. Oh, great news. We've got um, a Binding of Isaac and Holy Edition coming along soon. Brilliant.